Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Benjamin Blanchet. I will talk today about the use of OpenStreetMap data in flight simulation software. Okay, first a few words about myself. I'm a Java consultant. I'm mainly working on uh, web development, so stuff like Java uh, web framework, Java server faces, web services, service-oriented architecture. So unlike most of people here, I'm pretty new to Java uh, to mapping application, and my knowledge to related to mapping application are somewhat near zero. And uh, I'm also a private pilot student flying in uh, Saint Cyr. It's a, a town near Paris. Hence my interest in flight simulation software. Okay, so the outline. I'm going to start to explain a few flying concept, like the VFR flying and the state of flight simulation today. Then I'm going to present uh, my project, OSM2XP, which aimed at uh, injecting OpenStreetMap data into flight simulators. Then I'll show another uh, OpenStreetMap and uh, flight simulation story, a commercial, uh, a commercial flight simulator which, which uh, is now using OpenStreetMap as a main uh, data source. Okay, so I won't read the, the, the definition, but uh, VFR is when you're flying, uh, looking at outside the cockpit and using tearing features to, to locate yourself within a map and confirm your position. So you're using roads, forests, railroads, cities as uh, flying uh, navigation features. So here's a VFR map. You can see the, the features we're using uh, when flying, like forests, cities, roads, railroads. So you can see that more or less it's the same data that it's in, uh, in OpenStreetMap. So we could use this data to, to, to help train VFR flying. And you can also see all those uh, red squares. They are uh, SPS uh, zones where you have flying rules where you're limited to some altitudes and where you have to comply. You can see there are a lot of them it's uh, specific to Paris, where uh, you can have a lot of air space in a small area, and it's uh, a bit difficult for our students to, to comply to all these rules. So here's the, the area of my airfield in OpenStreetMap. You can see the airfield here. So you can see all those uh, altitude uh, restricted zones I was talking about. You can see that you have three of them in a very small area. Two air zones up uh, north of the road and one south of the road. Another big one just over the airfield. And more than that, uh, altitude or restricted zone, you also have a lot of rules to comply. When you're going in or out the airfield, you have to use the north or south, south of the road. You have to make a first uh, communication uh, with the tower at the beginning of the over a tunnel. You can see it's over here, but there's a tunnel just there. And you have to make another, make another radio communication at the beginning of the forest just here. You also have to avoid the residential uh, areas. So you have to use this forest. And you must be below 1,500 feet when reaching the pond. So we can see that we're using a lot of terrain features to, to see those rules. You re we use the road for altitude zones and to go from or to the, the airport. We're using the forest to know when we have to make a radar communication. We're using this pond to know when we have to be below 1,500 feet. And we're using those uh, residential areas and this forest to know how to go to the airfield. There are also, uh, there are also a lot of uh, other rules on this part, but I will stick to, to this one for this presentation. So you can see that it's easily uh, becoming a mess where you have to, to deal with a lot of rules, and it's very uh, difficult for our students at first. So one of the first challenges is to, to understand all these rules and use the terrain to, to see where you have to, to comply with them. Okay, so is the area with a picture taken from the cockpit. You can see the road with those altitude zones and uh, the way you have to go 
to or from or to the, the airfield. You can see the residential areas that you have to avoid by going through the forest. The points where you have to contact tower. And you can see it, but that's the point where you have to, to go down to 1,500 feet max. OK, so as a conclusion, you can see that a lot of flying rules in a very small area. A lot of terrain landmarks that you have to visualize and uh, use to, to follow those rules. And it's very easy for a student to, to feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed because you have all those things to comply and a lot of other things to do, like handling your aircraft, checking for potential failures, looking for other aircraft to avoid potential uh, traffic collision, and listen to the communication with the tower. So it's very difficult uh, for a pilot. So for a flight simulator, it would be nice to have all this uh, area with all these features, all these landmarks, to, to train without the stress of flying and get used to the area and uh, get a lot of training this way without the stress of actually flying the, the plane. OK, so now let's have a quick look at how flight simulators evolved over the years. You can see that it started with very basic wireframe graphics <coughs> and become over the year somewhat closer to reality with the light last version of Microsoft Flight Simulator X, where you can see that you, you have something somewhat closer to reality with uh, cities, uh, buildings, landmarks. So it's now OK to train to be effort flying with uh, something this close to reality. But now let's look if it's close enough to, to train with uh, the same area we, we looked before. Can we have the same landmarks and can we train in the flight simulator with this? So now we see that we can't. We have the, the main road, which has more or less the same, uh, the same form, but you only have the road and the water bodies. You don't have the forest. You have buildings uh, everywhere, forest everywhere. You, you don't have all these landmarks that you have to use. You don't have the forest, the residential zones, buildings. So right now, you, you can't train VFR uh, flying with a simulator like this. So you, you saw that graphicality has made a huge leap forward, but you don't have all the landmarks that you need for, for VFR training. And you also saw that all these landmarks are, uh, are present in OpenStreetMap data. So why not use them and uh, try to inject those data into a flight simulator? So here's the, the project I made, OpenStreetMap to explain, OSM to XP. Uh, with, it's written in Java. It's uh, based on Eclipse RCP. It's open source under GPL v3 license. So you see on the upper left all the simulators that are supported. Here of the, the application works. So it's pretty simple. You have to, to input uh, OpenStreetMap data that you can download on GeoFabric, CloudMade, or, or even an export made on the OpenStreetMap website. So the application uh, passed those data. Right now, there's three uh, implementation, XML, Photobuff, and Shapefiles. They are event-based uh, parser. So each time they, they read the node or the way, they will send them to a translator object, which is the main object of the application. It hosts the logic of uh, transformation. Basically, his duty is to, to read some OSM data it, and to transform it to something uh, that the simulator will understand. And there's as many implementations as there are the flight simulator support. So part of the, this logic is hard-coded into the translator object, and part of the logic can be uh, customized by the user. More on that later on the next slide. Then the last object, the writer, which is uh, responsible for writing, thank you, which has to, to write files, uh, eventually calling uh, compilation tools and stuff like that. So I told you about the, the rules you can have to customize uh, the trans transformation logic. 
It's pretty simple. You're just uh, binding an OSM tag to uh, flight simulator resources. For example, uh, for Ryan Tobin, you just have to, to tell the, the application to look for power source wind tags and to use this 3D object. And uh, you have this kind of thing for all type of flight simulator resources, for buildings, forests, 3D objects, lights. So you can do some pretty complex things if you have the the tags and the uh, 3D resource to make the rule. So next, now let's look uh, how we can compare to the reality now that you're reusing the OSM generated scenario. Okay, so we can see that it's a lot closer to reality. You have the roads, all the roads, forests, urban areas, uh, all the buildings are, are generated. You get the exact shape, position. Uh, you also have uh, water bodies, which are which have better shape than the previous screen we, we saw before. So we can see that it's pretty accurate in terms of footprint for forest buildings uh, and all of the features you can see. So now we have all the landmarks that we're using for for VFR flying. And if you can, you can take a uh, flying student, make it, uh, make him use the, the simulator, and he can train on this area and uh, understand all the, the rules he have to complete. You can see that he has to, he has to uh, avoid the residential areas by going through this forest, make his first contact uh, with the tower here, fly on the south side or north side of the road. So we have a few other comparison checks we, uh, with reality. You can see that we have the roads good, buildings, cities. You can also see that we have uh, industrial buildings, right, compared to residential areas. Another one. So you can see that on the screen that you don't have the right color for a roof, but as I told you before with rules, you could make, a, if you add in OpenStreetMap data a tag telling uh, that this roof is dark, you could make a rule and have the right uh, color. So besides that, you can see that you have the right uh, type of buildings, residentials, industrials. Roads follow the good, uh, good way. So it's pretty accurate compared to, to reality. Now a few other shots picturing what can be done with, with the tool. So we can see that an area with a lot of buildings like Paris, where you have more than one million buildings, you can have something very, very nice with building having the correct shape. Okay, so you can't not very see very well, but you can also do things like uh, adding uh, light objects on, uh, on buildings or parkings and make some realistic night lighting. Okay, so on this approach, on the pros and cons, now you can see that you can train VFR thanks to all the landmarks that has been injected into the, the simulator. Uh, you can also use uh, logic rules to make some complex things, like I told you before, like the roof color or maybe place some church, uh, hospital, whatever you want, provided you have the OSM tag and the 3D resource. Now on the cons, uh, results are good only on places with rich OSM data. You have to have a lot of buildings, forests, which is not the case for a lot of places like San Francisco, for example. So building coverage is good in Europe, but not at all on Port Rost, most of the world. So you can't use this solution for a lot of places. And uh, you also have maybe to, to enhance the USM data to have best results, like giving the eight of buildings, uh, adding complex tags, like before, to, to be able to make some uh, logic rules. OK, so now another uh, approach on uh, OpenStreetMap data and flight simulator. Laminar Research, which is a commercial company making flights, explain flight simulator, switched last year to OpenStreetMap as the main uh, data sources. Uh, for the previous version, they used uh, various data sources like Tiger, 
for water and roads for United States, the map level zero and SRTM for water and roads outside United States. And the data was uh, not good for Europe, so they had to rely on fake road generation algorithm to fill in the blanks because the data was not uh, dense enough to, to use uh, outside the United States. And so last year, for explain 10, they decided to switch to OpenStreetMap as the main data source. So here's a quick uh, comparison between uh, data source used for explain 9 and explain 10 for Paris City. So you can see that it was very empty uh, on the last version, so they had to rely to, to fake road generation. And uh, for explain 10, you can see that the OpenStreetMap data for Paris is very rich. You have nearly, you have all roads, you have a lot of buildings. So it's a huge leap forward. So what was their approach? They used OpenStreetMap for water bodies and roads for the world planets. But the uh, problem is that building coverage is uneven for the planet. You can't use uh, building for prints for for a lot of place. So they choose to use road coverage because it's very good for the worldwide road and they made a, an algorithm that generates building based on vector of roads and their density. Here's a screenshot, so we can see that they are putting buildings along roads. It's not totally realistic, but it's working for the whole planet. It's maybe more uh, realistic for United States where buildings are somewhat uh, construct like this, but uh, for Europe it's not very realistic, but at least you have something plausible for the world planet. So pro and cons for, for this approach. Well, you have something plausible for the world planet, as opposed as my solution, which is more aimed as rich uh, Western data places like Europe. And uh, user can fix missing features themselves, uh, meaning if some water bodies or roads are missing in another place, they can uh, add it themselves and have that in their simulator a bit later. So on the cons, building generation is plausible but not realistic. We, see, we saw that before. And uh, as the generation tools are not released by the editor, they have to wait for the editor to generate uh, the planet to have their, their change uh, visible in the simulator. And that's all. Thank you. Did you, any of you have a question? Yes? Uh, my question is for the 3D modeling for things like mountains and landscapes, the company was them, are those provided by the simulation themselves or another database? Uh, the mesh is uh, provided by SRTM uh, data. Sorry. Uh, you're asking how the mesh mountains and uh, stuff like yeah. this? Well, it's not from uh, OpenStreetMap data, they're using SRTM data. Okay. And they didn't make the switch, uh, obviously, okay. because OpenStreetMap has not the scanner of information. Okay. Yes? Well, uh, roads are pretty accurate from what I've saw, but uh, building coverage is somewhat uh, not perfect for a lot of places, like in uh, Barcelona where you have huge blocks of uh, huge, huge footprints, like the building, yes, but in fact it's a lot of smaller buildings. So it's not perfect for a place like this. And uh, wait, wait, yes, you can see that uh, the building coverage is not perfect, so you have to, but it can lead to user, uh, and I saw that on, uh, as a lot of people are using this, uh, this application, uh, you see flight simulator people going to edit uh, OpenStreetMap data to, to make it uh, more realistic for, realistic for that place. So it's kind of cool. Another question? Yes? Excuse me, I didn't get the, the question. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm saying, like, like for a tutorial. Like, 
Yes. No, no, I'm using, uh, you're asking uh, who is, is aimed at this application? Yeah. Well, uh, at first I made it for myself because I'm a private pilot uh, student. So I wanted to have the same thing uh, I was uh, seeing when I was flying to, to train and to, to prepare uh, flight navigation. So there's real pilots, we are using them, but I think most of the uh, flight simulation community are just uh, people flying virtually and are not pilots. But uh, um, the approach to have something very realistic is more uh, aimed, at, aimed, I think, to, to people like myself that wants to prepare a navigation. It's something that you that can be very um, a, a big time sink where you have to, to prepare every place you, you're going to go. And it's very interesting to, to be able to see uh, the actual place in the simulator before going to the real flight uh, the next day. Other question? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Just one quick question. Um, does the frame break really suffer from just the most expensive flight built in from one? Yes, obviously. But uh, as uh, hardware is getting uh, a lot uh, bigger, you can have something which uh, looks like the actual city uh, yeah. with a good frame rate. But if you're pushing, like, Paris area where you have uh, one million, one and a half million of uh, buildings, uh, yeah. Victor Red is going to be hard on uh, any hardware, cool. I think. Thank you. But you're not uh, supposed to fly over Paris, so <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. Well, thank you.